consider I have reduced water activity of a food and I want to know what would happen to the microbes. It is important to understand the coping mechanisms of microbes in low water stress, that is low water activity. This video is going to explain all the possible surviving strategies of microbes at low water activity. We could make our food preservation strategy better if we know how microbes survive, that is their coping mechanisms in low water activity foods. In this video, I am going to explain different coping mechanisms of microbes in low water activity. It is important to mention that low water activity could be achieved with the desiccation that is removal of water or adding solutes that is osmotic stress. First, I am going to explain osmotic readjustment to secure target pressure, then attraction of potassium ion, and then transient early stage cell divisions, then formation of compatible solutes, then structural changes of cell membrane, then biofilm formation, and then changes in the gene expression which controls most of the metabolic functions of a microbial cell. Contents are going to divide into three parts. The first part is going to include points 1 to 4, second one will include points 5 and 6, and third one will include point 7, that is changes in gene expression. I have sliced fresh carrots and they may contain microbes as they can be contaminated from the growing environment from my hands and utensil or equipments or from processing environment. I have dried some slices to preserve. All living things sense any stress or threat to them and then attempt to cope or protect it. Now we need to know what could happen to the microbes when water is removed from the food to reduce its, its water activity. Similar situations can also be valid for dried anchovies or any other low water activity food. However, pathogens prefer more protein based foods to grow. We want to kill or innovate the microbes by removing water but microbes want to survive with the stress of reduced water. For us, it is a challenge to kill or inhibit their growth, whereas it is also a challenge for the microbes to survive. We want to know how microbes cope with this challenge. What would happen if we expose a microbial cell to a low water activity environment that is hyperosmotic shock. Instantaneously, cell losses water and it losses its target pressure. The loss is due to the difference in chemical potential of water in the cell and the environment. For example, water activity of the cell is 0 0.95 and the environment water activity is 0 0.90 that is water driving force is from the cell to the environment. Target pressure is the internal osmotic pressure within the bacterial cell that pushes the plasma membrane against the cell wall. Initial expel of water from the cell is the first stress to the microbial cell. Osmotic stress causes a decrease in the cytoplasmic volume called plasmolysis. Extensive stress can cause lysis. What is lysis? Lysis is the disintegration of a cell by rupture of the cell wall or plasma membrane. This hyperosmotic shock causes considerable shrinkage of the cytoplasmic volume. 
Cell tries to bring back expelled water. If the osmotic shock is not too severe, then after an extended lag phase, the cytoplasmic volume increases as a result of the osmotic adjustment made by the cell. If loss of target pressure remains, then microbial cell attracts potassium ion from the environment to perform the physiological process at low water activity. Potassium ion could not protect the microbial cell for a longer time. If it is still difficult to maintain to the osmotic pressure, then microbial cell raises the level of compatible solutes within the cell after excretion of potassium ion. I am going to explain compatible solutes in details. In some instances, for example, early stage of hyperosmotic shock in E. coli, a fraction of cells goes to the cell division in addition to plasmolysis. And later stage of shock, cell division is stopped completely. That is, hyperosmotic shock caused a transient increase in the cell division rate, and in this case, cell stiffness is an important factor for this process. Microbes adapt to osmotic stress by accumulating non-ionic or compatible solids. These compatible solids can be transported from the environment which are called exogenous osmolite such as glycine betaine or can be produced by the cell through different biosynthesis of metabolic pathways that is endogenous osmolite such as glutamate, proline, ectoine, trihalose, and sucrose. Compatible solutes perform different functions to protect the cells during osmotic stress. These can balance the osmotic pressure, preserve protein function inside the cell, preserve enzyme function, provide selective cell membrane transport, and improve cell membrane structure for protection. These compatible solutes help balance the osmotic pressure and help preserve protein function inside the cell. These compatible solutes assist to prevent dehydration and thus facilitate metabolic activities necessary for growth. This creation of compatible solutes causes an increase in the internal osmotic pressure and restores target pressure. As an example, accumulation of electrically neutral low molecular weight compatible solutes such as proline, glycine betaine and ectoine can facilitate the bacterial cell to limit the loss of water. The compatible solutes can include sugars from the background of carbohydrates, amino acids from protein degradation and cation such as potassium ion. Compatible solutes produced internally are highly soluble, pH neutral and these are usually end product metabolites. Increased cytoplasmic iron strength causes low growth rate. However, potassium iron and glutamate are noteworthy exceptions and these two solids may not offer as an effective protection against hyperosmotic stress as some of the uncharged metabolites. Potassium iron could not provide long-term protection. Most of the compatible solids do not carry a net electric charge near pH 7 and this can be accumulated to high intracellular concentrations 
without disturbing the structure of cellular macromolecules. Compatible solutes unable to cross the cell membranes rapidly without the aid of transport system. Examples of compatible solids are betaine, trihalose, glycerol, sucrose, proline, choline, carnitine, mannitol, glucitol, ectoin, glutamate, amino butyric acid, glutamine, glycine betaine. In this slide, we could look at the hyperosmotic stress of E. coli as created by sodium chloride. 8,961 ions were detected, among them 1,071 corresponding to unique metabolites as detected from their accurate mass. Trehalose increased 40-fold and it was the major osmoprotectant for E. coli. Over tenfold decrease in the concentrations of various cyclic nucleotide monophosphate with increasing salt concentration, and this supported the hypothesis of CMP based modulation of CRP. Glycine, betaine, and glutamate remain the same, however, this could be used as osmoprotectants if available in the environment. The metabolites are grouped into four clusters. Cluster 1 contains 98 ions that decreased with increasing salt concentrations. The decreasing metabolites in cluster 1 were enriched for nucleotide and amino acid biosynthesis. This could probably reflecting a lower demand for these biosynthetic precursors. It is an indirect consequence of the reduced growth rate at elevated salt concentrations. Cluster 2 contains 348 non-responsive ions without a clear trend. Cluster 3 contains 24 ions that increase more than 100 fold with increasing salt concentrations. These are strongly increasing metabolites in cluster 3 and these are enriched only by four pathways namely the phosphotransferase system, starch, sucrose metabolism, galactose metabolism and ibuquinone terpenoid quinone biosynthesis. Essentially all metabolites in the ibuquinone Biosynthesis pathway accumulated on average 40 fold. This was consistent with a high demand caused by the 250 fold accumulation of the pathway end product ibuquinone 8. 110 fold increase was observed in lipidomics. The highest change was observed among all detected lipids with an apparent decrease of shorter chain lipids. The effect of ibuquinone on the cell membrane stability will be discussed in the next video. Cluster 4 contains 65 moderately increased ions that is nearly 30 fold. The moderately increasing metabolites in cluster 4 were mainly found in the pathways in the biosynthesis of carbohydrates such as starch, sucrose or galactose and other polyhydroxylated compounds. The next video will include the changes of membrane structure and biofilm formation of microbes under hyperosmotic stress. I would like to thank you for watching this video until the end.